God's word, faithfully preached, is his comprehensive equipment for changing lives, delivering them from the shackles of sin, the flesh, and the world, and transforming them into useful vessels through whom Jesus can pour out his blessings. Living Seed invites you to a feast of the truth as God's servant brings to us the word of life. Our theme for this year's Apex Clergy Retreat is the clergy exercising spiritual oversight, bearing spiritual oversight over the flock, over the which the Lord had made you overseers. And I would like to uh, bring a brief charge tonight as I ask you to please turn to two verses of scripture. So I'd like you to please turn to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20. Acts of the Apostles and chapter 20. I want us to take it from verse 25 to read and I'll get as far as verse 32. Now, behold, I know that you all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. For I know, I know this, that after my departure shall grievous woes enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts even as we meditate together tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. When it became clear that Moses would not be able to lead the children of Israel into the land of promise and God announced to him and said you will not cross into the land of promise you are going to be gathered with your fathers here you will not be able to cross there was one cry that Moses raised before God which cry was very significant in the way in which he cried to God. He wasn't crying again since God had told him and he has prayed. He said he has besought the face of God three times 
and God has told him not to speak to him about that matter again that he will not be able to lead the people beyond where he has reached but on that day when the Lord announced to him that you are not going to cross and carry the people to the land that I have promised them Moses rose in prayer and the prayer he prayed I want you to see that prayer because it is that prayer that is leading us to the church that brother Paul was bringing to the leaders of the church at Ephesus and if God has anything to say to us as leaders of God's people in Nigeria as leaders of the mainline denominations in our country it is because we are in a very critical point at which God must cause us to arise even to step into the role that God has given us now in numbers when God told Moses you are not going to cross over numbers chapter 27 Moses made a prayer and I want you to see the prayer because that is a precursor to my sharing with you briefly tonight before we get on to pray when God said to Moses in Numbers 27 God said unto Moses get you up from this mount Abarim and see the land which I have given unto the children of Israel and when thou hast seen it thou also shall be gathered unto your people as Aaron your brother was gathered because ye rebelled against my commandment in the desert of Zin in the strife of the congregation to sanctify me at the water before their eyes that is the water of Meribah in Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin and Moses said spoke unto the Lord saying this is his prayer let the Lord the God of the spirits of all flesh set a man over the congregation please follow me very quickly into that passage let the Lord the God of all spirits the spirit of all flesh let him set a man over the congregation which may go out before them and which may go in before them and which may lead them out and which may bring them in that the congregation of the Lord be not as sheep which have no shepherds I'm not going to go beyond his prayer because it is not about the appointment of Joshua and all of that that we are gathered tonight it is the cry that he made to God that again I noticed Paul was also crying when he was about to depart you remember he said many of you that I'm, are here you may never see my face again I'm going but there is something that you have to do I am going but you have to do something because of the flock over the which God has made you an overseer for Moses his idea of the clergy of the man whom God must set over his people look at his idea of it he said let the Lord God the God of the spirit of all flesh set a man 
over the congregation who will do what which may go out before them and which may go in before them and which may lead them out and which may bring them in so that the congregation of the Lord be not a sheep which have no shepherd. Once Jesus Christ saw multitude harassed, molested, oppressed of the devils and diseases when he had done all he could do after healing so many many more are still soggy, soggy the Bible says when he saw the multitude he had compassion on them and he said these are sheep without what? shepherds pray ye the Lord of harvest that he might send laborers unto his vineyard. It's a very critical matter for God's flock not to have people who will lead them out and bring them in. Who will bring them out and who will shepherd them and give them direction and provide a cover over their lives and it appears as if whatever harassment whatever challenging difficulty that the people of God had God's answer has always been it's because they have no shepherd. Pray that God will raise a shepherd over his people. But I want to thank God tonight that in his mercy and in his determinate counsel he has made you he has put you at the various point where he has put you as shepherds, as clergy, as overseers over the flock of God. Several of you as you are sitting here, some of you may have more than 200 congregations under your oversight. Some of you, by the grace of God, may be supervising several other pastors and shepherds under your hand. Some of you, by the grace of God, your clergy, those that are under you, they may run into hundreds. They may run in their own hundreds. These are men along with their wives that God in mercy has placed under you. While we gather together during these few days, we want to be examining the labor of exercising spiritual oversight over the flock of God and particularly over those that are again performing the roles of shepherding under your own shepherding. What is it that I perceive the Lord is asking? Why Moses cried? He was very specific about the kind of man that God must raise. A man that must go out before them, that, must, that may go in before them, which may lead them out and which may bring them in when we come back to look at exercising that oversight 
we might be looking at some issues, details of how to do it as several of God's servants may be bringing the word of God to us in the course of this meeting. But what is it that the Spirit of God is crying about? It appears as if whatever will happen to the flock, whether they will go out, whether they will come in, whether they will make progress or whether they will not make much progress would depend on your ministry in their midst. And so, brother Paul confronted the shepherds, the leaders, the apex leaders of the church at Ephesus. And the few words he brought to them which I just peruse through tonight and ask you to pray along with me. He first of all stood up to give account of his own life. When he had given the account of his life, of his ministry in their midst, and having appealed unto what they knew about him, about how he served God, about how he taught, about how he exercised spiritual ministry and oversight in their midst while he was there. He spoke so boldly, he said, I kept nothing back from you. Anything that I know was profitable to you, I did not keep it back. I have shown you and I have taught you publicly and from house to house. I have testified both to the Jews and to the Greeks. I have spoken about repentance towards God. And I have spoken about faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. He gave account of what he has done. He spoke about what he has preached. He spoke about how he has labored. And he said, but now, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem. I don't know what will happen to me. Except that the Holy Spirit is telling me that hey, serious persecution, serious bonds and afflictions are waiting for me. But I'm not moved about this. That is not my problem. As far as I'm concerned, I do not count my life dear unto myself so that I might finish my cause with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God I want to finish it that's that man that was the kind of man that, that was stepping out and these men are supposed to step in it bothered me when Moses was to step out and he began to say okay God I don't I'm not struggling with you taking me away but raise a man who will go in and come out I don't want these people to be sheep without shepherd and Paul began to cry here also and that's the cry that I want God to strike your heart with in this meeting. I perceive that heaven is crying. All the men who had ever labored over the body, over the church, are crying. Those that started this work, those that were missionaries in those days, those that were pioneers that broke the land, before the church began to take shape who have gone to glory when they cast their eyes down I hear them crying Lord the men you have put in place empower them that they might lead the people out and they might bring them in that they might provide direction they might provide movement for these people that they may advance them 
in the purpose for which you have set up your flock there was that cry that cry I'm hearing it again over the church of God in Nigeria and I perceive that this meeting is so crucial in the heart of God that is bringing me and you together to discuss to sit with us as regards your crucial place of bearing spiritual oversight over the flock I perceive that the Holy Spirit is bringing us he has brought you from a far far journey it was very touchy for me to see that some of us this is our first time of coming this way and as I'm asking how was the road how was the road everybody that came and said ah, the road is as if we have not come this way before the thing just became more difficult than before but yet you determine that you are going to be here God is bringing you here because there is a crucial matter the church the flock of God under your hand they need to break forth we are at the brink of a breaking forth or a breakdown and the spirit of God has sent for you as overseers of his flock we deliberately insisted that it has to be the apex leaders there may be some other junior clergy that are longing to come where say no 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 not yet you will have your own space you have a different meeting for you but these are for men who stand at the top echelon of the church of god of the denomination of the flock because something urgent must happen a clear direction must be provided for the people of God in the coming days while our Lord Bishop was welcoming you and rejoicing and thanking God that we have peace relative peace in Benue for which we are not ungrateful to God but you know I stand here tonight with a very heavy heart I couldn't yet say let me receive all the EYN uh, clergy you know why the EYN clergy will have loved to come all the way from Mubi all the way from Bono State but when you understand what we are going through many 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 of the churches have been burnt a local government that is 90 percent christian and mostly eyn churches have been sacked top clergy are crawling on the top of the mountains just to escape so the time we say oh clergy they say our heart is there but this is not the time we could leave the flock we are in distress and while we are talking about those ones and you may be feeling relaxed you go to a boy state and you see what Islam has planted you might be imagining that oh we are all right but these men are determined determined to do havoc unto the church of God our meeting this year is a critical meeting because God is saying call all my shepherds who stand in position to bear oversight over my church over my flock 
call them. It's a matter to discuss. Because of the, the challenge we found in Ebony State, we sent brethren there. We find there are Islamic schools. And the trouble is that if your child is going to be registered, if he's bearing Florence, they say we don't admit Florence here. They have to change that name. Fausat. And you see small Igbo children, we are not talking of, they are not house boys or girls. And when we felt, okay, let's counteract it by carrying a Christian approach, a Christian school to that community. And the brethren sat down to, to, to interview small children to bring them into school. Some, six years, seven, they are not ashamed. Igbo boys, Igbo small children, I say, I hate Jesus. I don't want to have anything to do with Jesus. And these children at six, they have been indoctrinated. They've been told that anybody who is following Jesus is an infidel and is not supposed to live. Why we are talking of Boko Haram up there? And all of you are saying, it's there, it's there. And you are not aware that this is a colossal attack on the church of God. And yet, if we do not bring them out or bring them in, they cannot move, they have no direction. You're coming to this meeting this week. It's a divine engagement. And I want to ask you to settle down as quickly as you can. God has put you in position of leadership at a time like this. God has made you to be the apex in the diocese or in the RCC, or in the DCC, depending on our own uh, nomenclature. Or you are the moderator of a particular synod in the Presbyterian. Or you are the district superintendent. Whatever it is that God has placed you to be at a time like this. Heaven is crying. So when children of that age have been indoctrinated, that if you see an infidel and you kill him, you are only serving Allah. What is heaven saying? What kind of spiritual oversight is God demanding that we exercise at a time like this? Over the clergy under our hands and over the flock of God. What is God crying about? We have thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of men who proclaim or who bear the name of the Lord Jesus. But if there are no people to give them direction, we will still scatter and perish. So as I welcome you, I have these few things to ask you to meditate about tonight. While we wait to receive God's word, coming to us deliberately by the mouth of his several servants from tomorrow, can I request that you should please settle in and take this week seriously. Ask God.
something must happen under your leadership in the course of the days ahead in the name of Jesus Christ. So what are the issues that Paul was raising with these people? Take heed therefore unto yourselves. We have some time tomorrow to reflect on that aspect so uh, I know God will be speaking more deeply about that. But I wish to first ask you to take note. Say, take heed therefore to yourselves. Don't forget that you are on a very serious assignment. Don't undress. We are in a battle situation. Don't lose your loins. We are in a critical condition. Even though things may appear succulent for some of you, evil is determined against God's people. But you are in position to turn it backward. Take heed, therefore. When they use the word take it, that means be careful. Be alert. Be deliberately focused. But first unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. As we are speaking now, several of the flock are scattered in different directions. And the enemy seem to be thinking that before we know, before we gather ourselves, he will have crept in to cause more havoc. But I believe the gates of hell shall not prevail against this church. I believe that every time God wants his church to advance, sometimes it's always in the context of serious conflict and persecution. But one thing I've always noted is that at such times, God's servants, whom he has made overseers over the flock they are the people who stand in the vanguard and provide guidance and leadership for the people of God you're coming here God is going to be sitting over our lives and speaking very deliberately into our ministries my prayer is that heaven will help us to take heed in the name of Jesus Christ why we are asking you to take heed therefore to yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. I will wish that in the course of this time you will not just think generally think about the specific aspect of God's flock that heaven has put under your hand. We want you to particularly consider the diocese, the conference where you are the president or the chairman, the convention, the particular synod where God has placed you. Because God is expecting that you will give account over that aspect of his flock. So while we are together, allow the Holy Spirit to give you opportunity of looking, looking back and say, now how much oversight have I provided over this flock that God has given me to handle for him?
finally while we charge you that the position where God has placed you is critical yet there is the first charge first challenge he said yes I know and it pained me that this man said I know I know this that after my party when I will have left grievous wolves will enter in among you not sparing the flock grievous wolves grievous wolves will enter in among you not sparing the flock I know this will happen that wolves that don't they have no passion for the flock they just want to tear them apart and scatter them and eat them if possible they want to come in take heed to the flock over the which God has made you overseers therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day what manner of man is this brother I never cease night and day night and day to warn every man for three years now I'm going I can't go beyond here it's your own duty now it's your, it's your own chapter that has opened now whether you know it or not sir it is your own chapter now the flock they are depending on what you are now and your decision so as we bow before God you will need to take responsibility it's your turn now you are the one in charge now you are the one in position now there is no other those who could have stepped in they have they have gone your chapter is the one that god has opened and let it not be that it is during your day that ravenous wolves broke through and destroyed god's flock as we pray i will charge you with the last illustration tonight and we're going to pray over that it was David that said he was keeping the flock of his father they charged him with the flock of his father and the Bible said suddenly a wolf came a lion came and a bear and all they were looking for is how to tear apart the flock and Moses I mean David said he stood and he grabbed the lion by the bed and tore it and delivered the flock from his mouth said so another bear came hungry hungry for the flock and David said I grabbed that also by the neck and I tore it and delivered the flock from its mouth bearing spiritual oversight over the flock is not an armchair business there's something that God is calling me and you into. It can no longer be business as usual. God is saying there's a matter for which my overseers must be gathered. And I will be asking 
that even though we have just come and even though there's so much that you have gone through as you came will you join me tonight to again agree with God Lord I am on duty Lord you have placed me over this flock ravenous wolves must not break in while I'm still here the lion that is going about hungry seeking whom to devour not while I am here oh God I want to take my stand the bear looking for who to tear apart must not break through into this flock while I am here every help I need every wisdom I must have every divine strategy you can lend me oh God I am here for it and as you've come together with your wife what a privilege to say to God this place you have placed us we must not fail to fulfill it but as Paul was finishing he reminded them, he said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified. As quick as it is possible for us to pray together on this tonight, permit me to ask, Where God has placed you and what God has given you to do, how is it? Are you yourself captured? Are you yourself crippled? Such that you have become so overwhelmed about your own personal needs that you could not have eyes to see what goes on with anyone else. Are you here? Even though tremendous responsibility and expectation has been on you, yet something is not doing well within your own spirit would you like to lay it before the Lord tonight you are already in position of leadership no one will take that space would you like to say Lord just as I am I am here make me a man Make me a woman along with my husband in this call that you have given us. We must not be blind. We must arise to fulfill what you have called us to do. Would you like to dedicate the next three days to God and say, while we are here, do something that will turn our ministry around, that will give a divine movement unto this walk over the which you made us overseers and should we be praying tonight and you discover that why God is putting you as an overseer the enemy has crept even into your own personal affairs yes reduce your own effectiveness of standing before God he has brought personal personal compromise and the issue of sin into your own inner life even though on the outside the paraphernalia of the office seem to be standing but the man inside has decayed and collapsed 
The other man cried. He said, they have made me the keeper of the vineyard. But my own vineyard, I have not kept. I have become dark. And the brethren are worried and they are annoyed with me. Maybe the Holy Spirit must begin to do a walk first on our own hearts tonight. And as Paul cried, as Moses cried, and the church that they brought upon this means that you are on a critical assignment for God. Take heed to yourself. I'm going to stop here and begin to pray that as we have come together, whatever is not in place, let the Lord handle it. Whatever has been a, a hindrance, because I know the devil is very strategic. He says, strike the shepherds. And what will happen to the sheep? They will scatter. If there's anybody who is the target that the enemy wanted to strike and make impotent, it is you. He knows that if he gets you, he has got everything else. That's why we're going to plead with God for strength tonight. We're going to say, Lord, just as I am, without one plea, I have come. I have come into this meeting waiting for your strength, seeking your help, seeking your divine visitation. First for my life, and may be able to stand and not chicken out at a time like this. Would you like to please stand as we pray together tonight? As we set you into God's presence, please rise and let us pray together. Thank you, Jesus. As several of our leaders, let's just lift up our voice to God in prayer. Let's just present ourselves to God who answers prayer. We have come. Some of you, by the grace of God, you are heading a whole denomination. Millions and millions of people under our hands. Thousands of pastors under our hands. Would you like to say, Lord, you have put me where I am. You will not put me there only to shut my womb. Do something with me. Do something with my life. Visit me, Lord, that your flock may not suffer damage. Empower me, O oh God, that what you have placed in my hand may not find damage. Let's pray together. Please plead with God for yourself. God who put you there understands the churches all over the country Please pray and say, God, how can I go without your help? How can I travel from here without a divine intervention? Lord, we're here. There are pastors that have come all the way from Niger Republic. We can't go back without your help. Can't go back without a divine intervention. Others are just arriving. Some will be coming in later in the night. Ah, Lord, for the sake of the flock of God, for the sake of your church, please do something with our lives. Do something with our own inner man. Do something with our spirits. Thank you, Father. Father, 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 we are here. Spirit of God, we are here. Oh, 
almighty God, we are here. Do something new with our lives. Holy Spirit, walk in our midst tonight. Holy Spirit, where are the enemy, the armies of the enemy that are creating unawares into the midst of your leaders? What are those things that are creating, oh God? Why we are on top there has sin begun to eat our own roots? Has it begun to cut us short inside? Why people say, my Lord Bishop, are we struggling inside and we are unable? We have lost power. Tonight, Lord, we are begging you, visit us. Do something deliberate about our case. Are you the chairman of the DCC or the RCC, the church, regional church council? Ah, but you have lost the grip of what you used to carry. The ravenous wolves have entered. They have devoured something. They have taken away that which used to be your fire. Please pray. This one retreat where we can cry. Lord, don't pass me by. While we are singing that song, pass me not, O gentle Savior. Maybe tonight already, you are already discovering that walls have taken something precious from you personally. They have destroyed your utterance. But there's nowhere nobody could stand to assist you. You dare not open up to them. They will ridicule you. So you have kept quiet. Tonight, can you cry to God, Lord, do something new for me. Do something new for me. Let's take that song together. Pass me not. Oh, gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others you are calling, do not pass me by. And as we take this song, did you seek to, you need a touch, you need the help of God tonight. He said, I know after I've departed, wars will come among you. They will come. Wars of compromise, wars of sin. Secret sin. Secret sin. Something that God delivered you from 10 years back has crept in. And you are saying, where can I go now? Who can I talk to now? You lose your courage. As we take that song together, pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others you are calling, do not pass me by. While we pray with that song, did you sense you have a need before God tonight? Did you sense that you have entered this retreat and you are saying, never will I go back the way I came. I need fire. I need freshness. I need a new touch. Lord, help me. As we sing the song, very, very humbly before God, knowing that we are before him who has put us in position, who brought us to reason with us on our ministry of oversight. You wish to say, Lord, I'm the one who is in need tonight. I cannot wait till tomorrow. Help my life. As that song goes, you may want to come before the Lord. You want just to raise your hand to God and say, Lord, Savior. As our Father, we we'll need to be praying for us. All those that are saying, Lord, I came wounded. I came deflated. I came tired. Do something with me, Lord. Do something with our lives. Do something with our ministry tonight. 
still do not pass me by Savior God bless you Precious Father, we bless you. That under this corporate anointing, here are some of us who have run to you for renewal, for necessary spiritual surgery that they need. They have run to you for cover because they have been harassed by personal wolves lions the wolf of sin of compromise or losing their spiritual estate spiritual authority spiritual oversight Oh God, we ask that in the name of our Lord Jesus, you will not pass any of this one by, and that your Holy Spirit will continue to begin something new in their lives. And oh God, our prayer is that as you have started to do something new in their own personal lives, even the rest of us, O oh God, will not miss your divine touch. That renewing touch. That transforming touch. God Almighty, Father, we do pray. You will continue to magnify yourself in our lives. And back home, as some of us may already be, uh, thinking about what is happening at home. Glorious Lord, we pray you will visit our various places of work. Father, in any way, in any manner that Satan has started to threaten and even scatter, Lord, you will rescue. Father, we do pray that in the name of our Lord Jesus you will continue to move mightily even in our own lives. We bless you, Father, for what you have started to do, revealing your mind unto us, even in relation to us, making sure that we take good care of our spiritual oversight. We bless you for what you have in store for us. As we return to our beds tonight, oh God, Holy Spirit, keep visiting us. And our prayer is that for all of us that are here, for our homes left behind, your peace will reign supremely. Your watch care will be upon our families and upon the flock of God under our care. Thank you, glorious Father. We honor and magnify you. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. This has been Living Seed. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko. Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 03636 59.
0703-768198. Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. <laughs>